Hello guys and girls, I'm Reef Matt, and today we're going to talk about snails. Snails that hunt and eat fish and other animals. Cone snails. Cone snails are members of the genus Conus, and they make up the largest genus of animals in the sea, with over 800 species. Work has been done recently to split up the genus, but nothing's been finalized as of 2019. We've all heard of cone snails, and at least 141 human envenomations have been reported and confirmed over the past 350 years, of which 36 were fatal. The true number of stings is likely to be higher though, as they tend to happen in remote locations away from medicine and news organizations. Cone snails show up in aquariums every now and then, so it's a good idea to know a little bit about them and what they look like. When they're in your tank, they almost always arrive with a shipment of other snails. Since they're carnivorous, they won't do much for your cleanup crew other than perhaps eating it. They range in size from a fingernail up to several inches long, with the fish-eating varieties like the Conus geographus here being larger than the species that eat snails and worms like the Conus textile here. As their name would suggest, all cone snails have roughly cone-shaped shells with their proboscis and eyes at the smaller end. The ones that eat fish are often found under sand, like a fighting conch, waiting for a fish to come along. The species that eat worms or snails, they spend their time on top of the sand where their prey is found and their shell could be covered in algae. Cone snails are found throughout the world from the temperate waters from California all the way to South Africa, and then all around the globe, around the tropical waters in the Indo-Pacific, uh, where our corals and fish are commonly found. The largest variety of the, them, with over 700 species, are uh, found in the Indo-Pacific Ocean from about Indonesia to Australia, and then maybe out to Hawaii. So what should you do if you think you might have a cone snail in the group of snails that you just got? It does happen. So what do you do? The most likely type of cone snail that you could encounter in the aquarium trade by mistake will only really be able to sting you about as bad as a bee, unless you're allergic. But it's still best not to grab it with your hands, even if you just suspect it might be a cone snail. Use tongs or a kitty litter scooper, something like that, to remove it from the tank. Put it in something like a clear glass bowl or a quarantine tank, and you'll be able to get photos. Take some photos of the top and also the bottom of the snail, and then post them online, like reef to reef or something like that, and people will help you identify exactly what it is. You can tell what kind of food a cone snail eats by looking at the bottom of its shell. This can help with identification. A large, wide opening means it most likely eats fish, while smaller, narrower openings indicate a worm or some other snail would be the food. Fish-eating cone snails are far more dangerous to humans than those that eat snails or worms because, obviously, a fish can get away, whereas a snail can't, so this kind of a snail needs a far more potent venom. Fish-eating snails eat by expanding a membrane out and around their target fish while it sleeps, and then after they envelop the fish, they use a hollow barbed tooth which is actually called a radula, to inject their venom. And then that venom paralyzes the fish before it can get away and then the snail eats it. Cone snails can fire more than one radula in a single hunting session. And people have been stung up to three times after picking up a snail. It's also possible for a fish to simply get too close to a snail where it's like hiding and then uh, they're very opportunistic. And so they've been known to actually envenomate and paralyze fish that are just far too large for a snail to eat. They can eat fish about as long as their shell, though. There are two species of cone snail, Conus geographica and Conus tulipa, which I have here. And both of these make a chemical very similar to insulin in their venom. And this actually puts their fish into hyperglycemic or hypoglycemic shock in the same way a human would be in shock if they were to overdose on insulin. These are the only two animals that we know of that use insulin in venom like this. Cone snail venom has also been made into medicine that you can get today from your doctor as a painkiller called 
uh, ziconotide or prialt. These drugs actually block calcium channels in nerve cells, and then they block the nerve cell's ability to transmit pain signals to your spinal column, and then they are a painkiller because of that. Conotoxin research is ongoing because it's found that, for example, that kind is about 10,000 times more powerful than morphine, and it's not addictive the way morphine is, which makes it a great drug. Conus geographica eats only fish and is the largest member of the Conus genus. It's very likely that all human fertilities are attributable to this single species. This species is very common in the wild throughout the whole Indo-Pacific Ocean and is collected in some places for its shell. While it may not seem possible, this fish, as well as other fish-eating species like tulipa, can eat a fish the length of their shell or maybe even a little bit longer than the shell. Conus textile is found throughout the Pacific Ocean all the way to Hawaii and is dangerously venomous, although it eats snails. In the wild, this species feeds on snails and things like that, other mollusks and gastropods, taking its time when feeding, and it can actually inject its radula and its prey 10, 12 times before it's done eating, and then it goes back under the sand and digests its meal. Cone snails that eat snails like this, they have venom that breaks down the bond between the snail's shell and its body, which makes it a lot easier for the cone snail to just sort of like pull the other snail out of its shell before eating it. Thank you for watching. Thanks for taking the time. I hope you found this interesting. Let me know what you thought in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more information about reef tanks and the creatures we find in them. Bye.